Uh, what are the common causes of hemifacial spasm? So hemifacial spasms are caused because of a disorder of the seventh nerve. One half of the face is supplied by the facial nerve, mm. which is the seventh nerve. So this facial nerve is important to conduct signals mm. to contract the muscles of the face. So there are different fibers which contract different parts of the face. Mm. So, when so there basically is we can say that it is related to the movement of face. Correct. Yes, it's an involuntary movement. So when there are abnormal signals that are conducted mm. in the facial nerve, mm. then that leads to spasms. So there are two facial nerves, one facial nerve on the right and one on the left. Mm. Now depending on which nerve is affected, you could get either a right-sided hemifacial spasm or a left-sided hemifacial spasm. The nerve actually begins way behind. It's in the small brain that is typically called. Oh. And the nerve exits from there, it goes past a lot of structures to finally come and supply the muscles of the face. Okay. Okay. Along its path, especially where it has exited mm -hmm. or it has just come out of the brain stem, this is the place typically where the nerve gets compressed mm -hmm. and this leads to hemifacial spasms. So this compression actually affects the signals that pass along the facial nerve mm -hmm. and this leads to contraction in the muscles mm -hmm. that this nerve supplies. And therefore, this is not under the control of the patient. Mm -hmm. So it happens when they don't want it, mm -hmm. when they least want it, mm -hmm. especially when they are facing strangers or they have meetings or some mm -hmm. presentations mm -hmm. which are very stressful. Mm -hmm. These signals become much more mm -hmm. and then it causes a lot of spasms in these situations. Mm -hmm. So hemifacial spasms most commonly are caused by, like I said, a compression of the nerve where it has exited from the brain stem. But this compression of the nerve could occur by means of a blood vessel, mm -hmm. which is most common. Mm -hmm. But quite rarely it could be because of a tumor as well. Oh, okay. There could be other lesions which affect uh, anything that causes a compression. Mm -hmm. Now how does a compression actually lead to hemifacial spasm mm -hmm. you may wonder. Mm -hmm. So this compression what it does is, you know, I, I like to give this example. Mm -hmm just like an electric wire has an insulation around it mm -hmm. and when, once this insulation is removed mm -hmm. there is a cross connection or a short circuiting that happens mm -hmm. within the copper, copper wires oh. inside the electric wire. Just like that if the covering of the nerve itself is removed mm -hmm. this could lead to cross talk between mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. nerve fibers and that leads to abnormal signals being passed. Mm -hmm. So any one signal which affects one fiber, mm -hmm. muscle fiber or one group of muscles can easily affect the rest of the muscles. Ah. Therefore, though it begins here, eventually st it spreads to involve, it all depends on how much crosstalk is happening. Mm. So this removal of insulation around the nerve is called demyelination. Mm. So to give a short answer to your question, the commonest reason is a blood vessel which causes compression of the facial nerve as it exits from the brainstem. How common is this disorder? Oh, it's not common at all. Um, in India, unfortunately, we do not have a directory, um, diagnosis itself is not made that often. Mm -hmm. There is no way in which we have a national integration of, you know, OPDs and such mm -hmm. things to know the exact incidence. But around the world, it's placed between different countries also have different registries. It's between 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 20,000. Mm -hmm. But I suspect that in India, it must be about 1 in 5,000 or 1 in 10,000. But we have no exact figures. It is not a very common disorder. But we do see many people when we go out in public who have these hemifacial spasms. Along with being common or uncommon, it affects women much more than it affects men. The reason for this is not known. Okay. It also affects typically people in the age group of 40 to 60. Mm. So does this mean that men are not affected? Yes. There are some people who say, no, I am only 20 years old, how can I have hemifacial spasm? Mm -hmm. You can. Just because I say that females are more affected and especially in the age group of 40 to 60 doesn't mean anyone over the age of 60 cannot be cannot affected be. or anyone right. lesser than 40 yeah. cannot be affected or males. It's not like that. More commonly women in the age group of 40 to 60 are affected but any age group and even either male or female, any of them can be affected. Okay. Uh, next question to you is, uh, is it inherited? Like from the grandfather to his grandson or from father to his son or? No, typically this disorder is not inherited. Mm -hmm. But having said this, there are certain anatomical changes that are seen in particular families or particular races. So it might be a little more common, but a general answer to this is no, it's not. So that means if a father has it or a mother has it, mm -hmm. can it be, you know, is it possible for the children to have it? Unlikely. Mm -hmm.